Um, so, next to Libby, we invited two young female practitioners in the field of design and fashion. Pinar Demirdag, Dutch Turkish, is um, one half of the artist duo Pinar and Viola. Their practice resides in the junction of art, design and fashion. They then translate cultural trends into exciting visuals, prints to inspire people for a more conscious future. We already can see this here on, uh, on the kimono here on stage. I think equal pay law, and I can see it on here. Is there anything else? I think um, Dina will talk about this more. Um, here it's a, it's a kimono from the Alternative Collection, it's a ready-to-wear collection, visu visualizing rebellious ideas um, that are rewriting rules, like equal pay or femme anarchy, for example. Um, they collaborate with world-leading brands like Google, Ikea, Nike, and take part in international exhibitions, especially for dissident, dissidents and quilting against in Z33. They made two quilts with a new and futuristic visual language that blends traditional and digital craftsmanship, craftsmanship and brings the anarchistic and mystical qualities of the Beguines back to life. Pienaar, tell us more about this female mysticism. Pienaar, Demirdag. Hi. I really want to get back on this question later, if we have time, because one of my biggest heroes in fashion, he does not identify as being part of the industry. His name is Azidin Alaya. He may be the man who dressed up, who dressed the most women that you know, but still, he, he just didn't like the corrupt dynamics of the industry, so he always decided to be outside it and be an example. So if ever I'm sitting anywhere, I'd rather be sitting outside as a, I hope so, as an example, but not being part of. And if I'm part of it, I would like to be the part of the change. Okay. <laughs> I, it, I have to say it. Okay, well, hi. Uh, I'm Pinar, and uh, we are a creative studio that work with visuals. Okay, so what's the deal? Maybe <laughs> <laughs> what's the deal? Magic. Okay, well, I, I was preparing this lecture yesterday, and then today, of course, it's like a very important day. Like, I'm going to talk about women empowerment how I do it, but the thing is, I never thought about these things before. Like, I never created like a woman, I like, I don't know, I just create. Like, I don't, like, I never had issues with being a woman, I never got harassed, I'm like, I'm cool. So today I would like to talk about to you about aesthetics, about the way we do what we do, but obviously I chose three topics that are very dear to us, which has to do with tonight's theme, with women empowerment. And uh, I came up with the sentence yesterday because I was like, we're, we're, in, we're, we're an Instagram generation. We're a, like image generation. And what we do is visuals, visuals that touch us everywhere, visuals that are crafted with the patience of a Renaissance painter, if I may say, and then with the aim to bring back the dignity of ornamentation, but without the crippling weight of nostalgia, but with a conscious and with a intellectual ornamentation. So uh, what we do? Wait. Okay. All right. What we do is that uh, we create progressively idealistic future scenarios with aesthetics from future. We work like an image lab every year. Like the way in a lab you invent new uh, treatments, we invent new image making techniques. Like a this year we were so busy with alternative systems, alternative worlds, so invented a whole new different jargon for what it is to be alternative, I'll show you later. And then uh, we always marry them with themes of the zeitgeist, like uh, she said, uh, farm anarchy, equal pay law, microdosing psychedelics, universal basic income. And we, we use our work, our, the visual work we do, as a special effects for fashion and technology. So, for the ones who don't know, this is Viola. I really wanted you to see her. She's my other half. She will, she's not here tonight, but like, 
I find it incredibly important that I'm Turkish and Canadian and she's Dutch. And we're like just so different. Like she looks things at this way, I look at this way and we unite in quality and uh, integrity. But somehow our union really goes against all nation states rhetorics that two separate people so far away from each other cannot collaborate, cannot be in harmony and has to be in opposition to one another. I was uh, giving a little uh, afternoon class uh, in Pixel Mat this afternoon and then I started my time with we see differences as wealth. I think like one of the biggest problems of our beautiful humanity is that we see differences as reasons to start wars. This is my team and that's your team. For me that has no difference that this is my religion, that's your religion. Or this is my political ideology and that's yours. Differences are wealth. She's Dutch and Turkish. She thinks this way, I think that way. She makes lollipops, I make potatoes. So we sell lollipop potatoes and we're so good in it. <laughs> okay, so uh, three projects. And the first one is the one in Hassel. This is my second time here. The first one is the project we did in Z33. Uh, sorry, water. It's about, be I can never pronounce, Begina, Beguin, uh, what do you say? Begina, Beguin. Forget it. Begina, <laughs> Begina, English, ish? Yes, voila. These wonderful women, really super wonderful, they are, Anyways, uh, it's, they were lay women. I mean, don't, don't be fooled by the looks. They were not nuns. They were lay women who were very active in between 13th and 16th century in low countries. They had mystical powers, but more than everything, anything, they were the first feminist anarchists. So they were going against the clergy, against patriarchy. They were saying, in order to... In order to talk with God, you don't need to go through a bunch of men and pay them and be their victim. So they were like, if you want to find God, it's within. They were quilting, chanting, doing community organizations, uh, while also, this is the, the cherry, while having erotic visions of Christ. But that's a whole different topic for another lecture. Uh, this is what we did. You can still see it. I believe it's still on for a few more weeks. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, we identify them as cosmic quilts. Cosmic quilts. Uh, well, basically we were given a sort of an assignment, like all participant designer artists, to reflect on the... <coughs> like declining moral codes in the fashion industry. Like, I don't need to tell you, we all know the Me Too movement, the uh, sweatshops, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I all, like Viola and I, we always like to look at things from a positive perspective. Like the negative is out there. If you want to search for the negative, just look at the news. And uh, as, um, as my, ro my role as a creator, I always, look, I always would like to represent the positive side in duality. So what we did here is that we represented uh, a cosmic. We we represented the elevation in the fashion industry in the form of a cosmic quilt to channel the mystic powers of Begina. I know the next question: What the fuck is a cosmic quilt? So uh, the idea came. Uh, I was visiting this wonderful show. If not, like, if there's anyone in the audience who don't know who this amazing artist is. Please look it up. Her name is Hilma of Klint. She's an Austrian um, artist, but more like a channeler. She was part of seances, seance groups with her group of friends, and they could channel, communicate with entities that are not visible. Call it ghosts, call it aliens, call it whatever you want to call. And then uh, I was very touched because she was also a, a rebel in her time. And that was very beautiful. Throughout the exhibition, you see that she knew that if her paintings would be out there back in the beginning 1900s, nobody would understand. So she chose to remain. She chose to not show her paintings for a time that would not understand, but let them sit somewhere until the time humanity was ready to see them. She always imagined them being exhibited in a spiral building. It's Guggenheim. 
So yeah, it's, I, I was very touched by this. And she calls like this also, and then I started looking into the shapes, channeling what is she trying to say. Then we end up with cosmic <coughs> diagrams from different cultures. I find it really fascinating that no matter where you are in the world, you still see pyramids being born in the same times. This is Hinduism, this is Kabbalism, and then the right one is a contemporary creator. From, both of the di from all the diagrams, the different initiations, parts of the dimensions that we don't see are being depicted. Like back in the days, I know that right now with Newtonian physics, our mind is very tomorrow, today, and yesterday. But the way mathematicians were operating back in the days, it was no different than mystics. A lot of mathematicians had the classification of mystics, and that was purely normal. So, for multiple reasons that cannot fit in this lecture, we are limited with our three-dimensional understanding of reality. And I find that I believe in physics, but I believe in metaphysics more. So, what we wanted to do is to be, is to vision, because for me, Beguine of women, they channeled that, the metaphysical, the non-seen in, uh, in what they were doing. And they were enlightening people as an al being an alternative to the patriarchal oppressive system that is mimicked today, obviously. So um, this is the outcome of two quilts. Our work is filled with symbolism, if you didn't notice, but I bet you did. It has angel, I mean, I don't need to tell you, they're very visible, like angel wings, moon cycles representing feminine cycles. Uh, the devotion to hand quilting of the femme, of the woman. But the most important for us is the symbol that sits in the middle is on our occult and anarchy. It's a joint symbol of both. For us, what Begayana mystics were doing. Uh, so, uh, now that I have the stage, I would like to thank again to MIH for facilitating so much, so much handwork in uh, making us uh, achieve this result. I would like to show you less than a minute little movie. It's in Dutch, uh, where it shows Viola explaining what we're doing. In this work, specific dissident zijn komt grappig genoeg voort uit dat deze installatie echt super vrouwelijk is. We zijn echt gewoon zonder enige soort van gêne of ons in te houden all the way gegaan met hele vrouwelijke elementen en ook eigenlijk een soort van vrouwelijkheid die ook misschien conservatief gezien kan worden in de zin van roze gebruiken of, of parels of veertjes. Voor ons op dit moment willen we heel erg vrouw zijn in dit werk en dit doen we op onze manier en we hebben er gewoon enorm veel lol in. And uh, so I'm, uh, for those who know me, I'm a, I'm a book nerd and I don't miss any opportunity to recommend a book. So um, this was the book that inspired us both in doing what we did. And if you would like to read about really cool rock star women from another century, you have to read it. Um, okay, this was the first. So as I said, I will be presenting uh, three projects. Uh, and the second one is where when we made Mother Earth come alive, like uh, and like as, as someone who creates, somehow I feel like a mother. And then uh, a mother should never choose between its sons and daughters as favorites, but I may have to do that. And this may be one of our favorite projects because of its message. And yeah, you was, I mean you discover it yourself. Uh, so we did this project in 2015 as part of a COP21 uh, Ecology Summit in Paris. You know, when all world leaders come together and talk about the world. And uh, we were asked by Glide Chapel Gallery, a gallery in the gallery district of Paris, Marais. And uh, they asked us to reflect as we, we're, uh, we reflect on contemporary issues with humor and aesthetics. They asked us to reflect on what was going on in the following weeks as a, a summit of art events. So um, this is the ecology summit that you're looking at. So old world leaders are present, including your favorite dictator, uh, dictators with in all shapes and colors. I mean, I'm sorry, but I find this pathetic. Like if we're talking about, <laughs> 
it's kind of like it's so nonsense that all suited up men talk about the future of nature. It's just, I don't know, it doesn't make sense. And when we were looking at this, we were like, okay, uh, well, what, somebody's missing, like, hello, Mother Earth. Like, everybody's invited except her. I mean, it's such a fantastical idea to make Mother Earth come to a conference where she's not expected. And so we made her come alive in the form of a sensual flower. Uh, we installed a we installed her, we installed a Mother Earth Chapel in the center of Marais, where she was giving um, conscious messages to street passerbys. Um, so she would, it, it's like a meditative video. I will only show you a minute, a part, like a, a documentary part of it. Uh, and then I'll continue. We cannot command nature, except by obeying her. Only the gentle are ever really strong. Um, okay, something really unexpected. While we were working on this uh, art assignment on our gallery show, we got in touch, I mean, we take commissions quite regularly. And then for some reason, I'm very grateful, we always have the most fun clients. We had this email dropped from MTV America asking us to do a bumper. Like, I don't know about you, but I really grew up with my head sticking out to the TV screen, just watching all types of commercials, just in order to end up in this, at that very moment of the most compressed ecstatic visuals, explosion, this was my food. So of course, like, it's such a, like a happy moment for, for this kid and Viola too. So we were like, okay, uh, let's make something that disrupts, that makes people question. And uh, we were like, okay, so we're working on Mother Earth, and then would you like to see Mother Earth on MTV? And uh, I'll show you what we did for them. Yeah. America for like a week every day at least a hundred times and this was people's answer <laughs> it's like, I love it it's like isn't it priceless like you have a way of operating like numbness watching TV and all of a sudden like all of a sudden, like why do, I, why do I need to respect my mom like my mom was proud <laughs> so it's like like when you're a creator and you don't, I, like I really don't say that I only do such paintings or I only do such clothes. I just, I don't know, I have to make things constantly and they come in the form of prints, technology, video, installation, uh, fashion, it really doesn't matter. For me it's all like same babies. And then when we made, when we made the video, then we were like, okay, let's, let's, make a, let's make a surface because surface can go on any surface. You can cover an airplane with this if you like. And uh, of course when Mother Earth is there, 
of course, peace and no war comes along as well. Like all, I mean, it's really a, it's, I, I don't really say these things very often because I don't like to dissect our work. It's like, why do you like your girlfriend? I love her hair. Like, you just say, I, like, I, I love her nose. I love her fingers. No, you just love her, man. Like, you see? And I, like, for me, work needs to be this way, but today I would like to point out an element. Sometimes people ask what that is. Do you see un unreadable things? Like these unreadable texts. It looks like nothing you know. They come from a, from a text called Voynich Manuscript. It's the world's only non-decipherable text ever existed. It is believed to be written in, I believe, 1600s by a herbo herbologist? Yeah, mix, uh, biologist, herbologist, how do you say it? Yeah. And then uh, all like crypto researchers, whatever, nobody can unlock the codes of this, uh, of what that book wants to say. The book is filled with uh, plant recipes with women bathing naked and with astrophysical uh, movements of, uh, uh, of planets. And for me, what we were trying to refer is that a woman is such a complex being, Mother Earth is so complex that no human can encrypt its code. But of course, I like, we like to do things in a subtle way, like it's Maybe you have seen this text somewhere, and I really do believe that no matter what happens in the collective psyche, or no matter what you see even from a corner of your eye, gets recorded in your mind. So even if I don't say, have you seen this? We did this. It's like, I, I just leave it up to people to discover what they want to see. If not, I'm just happy if somebody says, yeah, it looks nice, great. <laughs> so no, like we, little we knew that this was our first uh, experiment with fashion. We made this print of Mother Earth. Then we said, okay, let's really make Mother Earth come alive. So this is our first uh, piece of garment, piece of clothing. I, I never shied away from being a woman. Like, I'm feminine, I'm uh, naive, and then I can be bossy sometimes, but it's like, I can't help. But I'm, I, don't, I, don't, I never believed that I have to be like a man in order to show my strength. I'm, uh, I'm fragile and I'm proud of it. And I like our clothing to be this way as well. So, as I said, I never shy away from any opportunity to recommend a book. So, this is another kick-ass woman from a complete different era. It's a very recent book, uh, written by an Egyptologist woman. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Okay, last one. It's uh, our uh, ready-to-wear fashion line. Garments for an alternative reality. So um, yeah, I found myself designing clothing. I, I, I'm 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 not on the stage to say I'm reinventing fashion industry. It's not my. It's much more humble than that. I would like to make clothing for myself and for people who, for my friends, for other creators, or whom anyone who identifies as alternative, who is working towards a more conscious and health, healthy alternative world. Uh, with belief systems that are considered as minority and utopia and weird and impossible. And by the sheer act of making them, I believe that we're contributing to them coming alive. Like she's wearing the dress, the kimono that, she's, that you're seeing on stage, it's equal payload. By the very idea that a sensual, beautiful woman saying that it's being equal pay and the law is here, it already collect, contributes to the collective psyche that it's already arrived. Like, do you know these aphorisms of, uh, in order to make something come alive, you have to speak in the now form? Like, I want to get that assignment, I got that assignment. Do you see, like, because if there's only one timeline and that's the now, if you say, I got it, you will start vibrating in you getting it instead of you, yeah, I'm still waiting. So this is what we're trying to imply here. So you will see, like, I will show you different garments, a uh, few, but you will see that at all times we've been working on the layering messages, but not like this is how feminist looks like, like you showed, but more subtle and more uh, soothing and indirect. Because I believe this is, how this is how the female strength is, instead of being 
warm and masculine direct. <laughs> it's more mystical, it's more soft. So um, I'll show you three garments with three different topics. And um, so this one is the one that you're seeing on stage. I don't know if you know, like, uh, but in 2018, Iceland has this law of equal pay law. So since January 1st, 2018, in Iceland, if a man and a woman do the same job and they're paid unequally, it's against the law. So, um, like we said, we, no matter what we're doing, we have to touch upon something uh, contemporary, upon something uh, yeah, that is in the news. So, uh, under the umbrella of alternative works, uh, visuals and garments, this is the first one. So, at first, the artworks came, the works came, we had to like, when you say equal pay law, I think of something very serious and with a lot of, like, sadness. Like, women feeling like unequal, like a victim, being oppressed. And then I do believe that if you want to tackle a subject, if you don't, unless you manage to do this with humor, that means that you're still hurt. They don't respect us! Blah, blah, blah. And that's, like, so lamentable. It's so, like, yeah, let me cry for you. And then if you're, like, yeah, these men, it's fun. We were like not being paid, but now it's like, it's our turn, girls. Yeah! Like, I find, I find strength in there. And then, we, like, no matter what we're doing, we're willing, we're, uh, we want to empower through uh, beauty and also through humor. And, of course, visuals, blah, 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 symbolism. I mean, I don't know if, are there any of you who can read symbols? Sort of, like, history? No, yes, shyness or no? Okay, let me move on. Uh, so w we refer here to Ishtar, the goddess of the underworld, the goddess of war in Mesop Mesopotamia. She is also uh, the main inspiration behind Statue of Liberty. She is always described with a woman of a crown. She is known to make man because she was the queen of underworld. She would send boys to the underworld for them to suffer and man up and come back. So um, she's always depicted with a crown of seven uh, points, like a Statue of Liberty. So here she is, empowering woman. She's always described with lions lying on her feet. But this is all like very like a throughout century symbolism. And I really do, do believe in breaking all norms. Like I think I made it my life goal to break my own boundaries in any subject. And also when we create, we also operate this way. If there's a certain visual language, which is, which is very like painting, we like to uh, break it with contemporary characters of humor. So we have misabundances, uh, having fun with wealth. Um, so we made a textile print out of this, which turned into a kimono with elements coming from the main painting. You see it here, from front and from behind. And uh, of course, making garments was not enough, so we made uh, jewelry as well. And elements of, uh, of this painting come back in the form of jewelry, accompanied by uh, contemporary uh, slogans of woke, as you are all familiar with. Uh, Miss Abundance coming back again. Um, the second subject. We start, it's Me Too, but we started working on this project like three years ago. So, uh, of course, this is, a, this is a topic that is in the air so much. But now it's so easy to express it by saying, yeah, it's about Me Too. So, uh, it's really about women taking power in their hands, but it also, it also has to do with the visualization of uh, alternative and visualization of, uh, of anarchy. I don't know what you think about when I pronounce the word anarchy, but until very recently I thought of testosterone, anger, resentment, black and white, I kill you, this is what you did to me and I'll fight back. And then I'm really not against fighting back, but I also would like to have options. Like, I, as, a, as a female, as a woman, I did not think that the way anarchy was visually identified was the way I like to identify myself. And uh, so we created this, two minutes, okay. 
Well done. Um, blah de blah, you see it speaks for itself, but we always have visual games where the background comebacks in the t-shirt. So, uh, so we made chill suits for chill anarchists. And uh, we also turned this another self-repeating pattern with women from different backgrounds. Let's make it three. And then uh, made, a, um, made a business suits out of it. Of course, it comes back in the form of jewelry. Uh, the last topic is uh, the one that I'm wearing the skirt is universal basic income. I mean, the way this uh, cartoon is describing in the future when um, AI will start making money for us, corporations and governments will no longer need to use robotized human work. So in an optimal idealistic scenario, they will be able to uh, offer humanity the job that AI is making, so people will have more time to dream, to create, and to find themselves. Highly recommend it. <laughs> uh, so we start making, obviously, jewelry, because, yeah, like, what is, what is better than your own body as a slogan campaign billboard, right? If ever, like, I enter in a room and everybody's like, what are you wearing? Universal basic income. What does that mean? Have a look. It's, it says fair future. It says abundance for all. And uh, like I really do believe in the power of uh, sexiness. Not sexy, not in a crude, in a cheap way, but in sensuality. You can really make things desirable. You don't need to. Sorry. You don't need to be with the finger to point certain things. You can also use aesthetics, beauty, and charm to talk about really serious stuff. And so we have this pretty insane uh, universal basic income kimono and the dress that she's wearing. I just would like to zoom in. It's one of my second last slide. Uh, so here you can see, I explained it in the school this afternoon. We hijacked the visual language of pawn shops. You know, in America, blink, blink, ghetto, when men ran out of money, they turned their uh, chains into dollar bills. Like, of course it is wealth, but in my opinion, it's a, it's a wealth that has corrupt dynamics. But it still has the glam of the ghetto. So we, have, we, we hijacked this visual language of gold, of shining, of bling bling, but we transformed it into a sort of a positive campaign for uh, universal basic income and for more conscious distribution of money, abolition of poverty, free money for all, uh, the abundance cat of Asia, universal basic income, this desire, free, etc. So God is hidden in the details. And then uh, like it's, it's the first time we're making clothing. Like it's also, an, it, everything in my life is an experiment. I never say that I am this. I am a, if I define myself with something, I'm a constant experiment. So the way what I create is also a constant experiment. So here, we experimented with layers of clothing the way we experiment with layers of visuals. So, um, God is hidden in details is our second favorite quote. And coming back to the first. So, it closes the circle. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, we will talk to you, we will take questions a little bit later. So, I will go immediately to Vida, if Vida is ready. Thank you so much. Vida is ready. Vida is ready. I hope. Uh, so yeah, um, the, the men want to be equal now because uh, the women uh, are so powerful. Uh, like the Lady of Liberty, uh, we want to be equal now. Okay, now the time is always now, as the timeline suggests. And uh, I like the way Pinar talked about uh, you the way you could look at her work, it is uh, in the eye of the beholder, uh, so you can be uh, with the third eye or extra dimensional, like this, uh, the, the Mother Earth coming to lecture the, the, the dictators. Uh, it would be a would be funny sight though, giant globe storming in on the G12. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> this was the failed table. This uh, I tried to draw it, but was a little bit difficult. It's like the begin, begin, uh, with the, 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 the male mask. Uh, so, but it, it's not. Just, okay. uh, the patriarchy is hidden inside the box. All the rest and the beautiful things are outside the box. I think outside the box, the beautifulness of women is outside the box. Okay, uh, but is humanity ready? I like the metaphysics, this, this, this stuff. <coughs> okay, sorry, cheese, it's hot in here. Uh, and aesthetics is the currency to end with what she began and end. Uh, I like it also. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.